morning everyone watch woman warrior here um it is january 27 2022 and um i'm doing this video because um i randomly opened my bible this morning to isaiah i thought isaiah chapter 2 and i read that and i'm like well my goodness lord that sounds like exactly what you would be telling everybody today well i just um uh, re-upped my coffee intake at, you know, around noon, and I decided to sit down, and I started reading the whole book of Isaiah, like I started from the beginning. And I was, as I was reading it, the Lord told me that this is being fulfilled in our generation. Like, because God has done the same things over and over again throughout history. He's had the same kind of plan. It's the same plan and he does like the same thing over and over again, only using different people in a different way. But it's the same thing with the same end result, just using different generations and different ways and different use of technology and stuff to do his amazing perfect plan. And also has control over the other side as well and what they're doing with their, what they think is their amazing perfect plan. But anyways, um, the Lord told me to do a video, and Isaiah 1 through 4, he says is happening in our day. What he's getting ready to do right now, why he had me do the video, I was calling out to all his knights and all his warriors, all the knights of Christ, all the warriors of God who are ready to stand and be willing to give their life for Christ, literally. Like, not by actually fighting in a war or fighting... You know, like actually fighting physically. But the spiritual battle that we face every single day now. Which will end up taking our life in the end. Because we all know that if we don't see the Lord's return, we will be martyred for our faith. Because that's what happens with the true believers. That's our that's the whole point. That's why we're called knights and warriors. Because we fight unto death. We fight to the end regardless. And we are willing to lay down our lives for our fellow man. And we do it in the way the Lord taught us how. You know, we may have an armor of God with the sword and shield, the spirit and faith. But the only sword that we need to wield is the sword of truth. The absolute God's honest truth. Because that will cut asunder everything. And the only thing that will be left standing is what is of God and from God, of the Lord and from the Lord. And that's all that will be left. Thank you, Lord God, so much for us being here today. I want to pray for a hedge of protection around everybody. I pray that you open their eyes and you open their ears and you open their hearts spiritually, Lord God, to you. And that you mark them on their foreheads and on their right hands with your mark, Lord God. And they know and they have faith and they have the armor of God with the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, and their feet always shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Heavenly Father, teach us what it means to be your knight, a knight of Christ, and a knight of the one true Father God, creator of all, the only one true Lord God Almighty. Give us faith and courage to stand up and be able to stand out against the wiles of the devil, to defend and protect the truth and the innocent, no matter what, willing to lay down our lives for our fellow man knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that no matter what happens that you are always in control and all we have to do is ask of you lord god and if it is good in your eyes you will fulfill it you will do it you will move mountains you will breathe fire down from heaven itself because you are god you are the creator of all and nothing and no one could ever stand against you and nothing and no one in our eyes, Lord God, will never come before you. No matter what. Until death brings us home to you forever. We will forever and always follow you, listen to you, be guided by you, trust you, have faith in everything you say is truth. And always stand up for the truth. 
the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help us, God, because you say it to be so. Let your will be done on heaven as it is on earth. In your precious Son, Christ's name we pray, our Savior, Emmanuel, Messiah. Lord God Almighty, we love you. We praise you. Thank you so much. Amen. Let your will be done. Okay, now let's read. Isaiah, chapter 1. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Ezekiah, kings of Judah. Now, when I read that, he actually told me I didn't need to even read that part because that doesn't matter right now. What matters is what follows hereafter in the first four chapters of Isaiah. I encourage you to read along with me or even read it yourself after. You don't even have to listen to the rest of this. You can just turn this off right now if you want to and go to your Bible and read it, you and the Lord, and, and talk to him about it. And he will talk to you. He'll, he'll, he'll explain to you. Okay. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knows his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know, my people does not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel into anger. They are gone away backward. Why should you be stricken any more? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even into the head, there is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and putri putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country desolate, your cities are burned with fire, your land strangers devour in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts had left it unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, says the Lord? I am full of burnt offerings of rams. And the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks, or of lambs, or of he goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with it. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hates. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yes, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourself. Make yourself clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Let your sins, be, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. How has the faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Your silver is become draws, your wine mixed with water. Your princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loves gifts and follows after rewards. They judge not the fatherless. Neither does the cause of the widow come unto them. Therefore, says the Lord, 
the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel. Ah, I will ease me of my adversaries and avenge me of my enemies. And I will turn my hand upon you and purely purge away your draws and take away all your tin. And I will restore your judges as at the first and your counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, you shall be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her con converts with righteousness. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which they have desired. And you shall be confounded for the gardens that you have chosen. For you shall be as an oak whose leaf fades. And as a garden that has no water. And the strong shall be as toe and the maker of it a spark, and they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Therefore you have forsaken your people, the house of Jacob, because they replenished from the east, and are soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. Their land also is full of silver and gold. Neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses. Neither is there any end of their chariots. Their land also is full of idols. They worship the works of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. And the mean man bows down, and the great man humbles himself. Therefore give them nothing. Enter into the rock, and hide thee in the dust, for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low, and upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures. And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. In the idols he shall utterly abolish, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake terribly the earth. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold which they had made each one for them himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty, when he arises to shake terribly the earth. Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils, 
for wherein is he to be accounted of? For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, does take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water, the mighty man and the man of war and the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient and the captain of fifty and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator. And I will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying, You have clothing, be our ruler, and let, us, let this ruin be under your hand. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be a healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord, to provoke the eyes of his glory. The show of their countenance does witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their souls, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous, that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead you to cause you to err and destroy the way of your paths. The Lord stands up to plead and stands to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For you have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. What do you mean that you beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, says the Lord God of hosts? Moreover, the Lord says, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet, therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, and their calls, and their round tires like the moon, and the chains, and the bracelets, and the mufflers, and the bonnets, and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, and the tab tablets, and the earrings, the rings, and nose jewels, changeable suits of apparel, mantles, and the wimples, and the crispin pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of a well-set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a grinding of sack, or sorry, a girding of sackcloth. And burning instead of beauty. Your men shall fall by the sword, and your mighty in the war. And her gates shall lame it and mourn, and she, being desolate, shall sit upon the ground. And in that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread, and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by your name, to take away our reproach. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion, and he that remains in Jerusalem, shall be called holy, even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem, when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, 
and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a covert from storm and from rain. Amen to that. Praise be to God. That he gives us his truth and his word and through his prophets and they were so amazing to trust him and have faith in him and believe in him and do what he asks of them. And now that's what he asks of us. It's about to get very different, very fast. Because when the Lord shakes terribly the earth, the whole world indeed will shake. That's, that's not a joke. That's not an exaggeration. He will shake terribly the earth, and they're calling it the pole shift. But it will eventually be known as the great sh as the shift the great shift and uh it's going to be a cascading effect of course but it's not that's not shakes terribly the earth is not just an earthquake it's not just shifting of the land it's the spiritual division we've been marked the Lord has marked us all. Those of him have been marked on their foreheads now. And those who are not have been marked as well. With the same mark that he gave Cain after he killed Abel. It's a spiritual mark. There is a physical mark that will come from the beast. Because that's the only way he can control his masses. Is through his mark. That will be technologically based. That's already being injected in everyone. That will in turn become a chip or some way for them to be able to scan you or light over you or something to see if you have the mark, which will be literally in your blood. It will literally be in your DNA, the mark. And that's the whole plan for them because the only way for them to get rid of the creator of all is to do whatever they can to wipe him out of our genetic code which God said he etched himself in us in our being and we know our being is what we call DNA it says everything about who we are what we are where we came from or where we're going and they know the truth and they've done everything they can to hide it from us but praise be to God he gave us what he referred to as revelations and that is where we're living now. And God is, God is amazing. He will reveal all truth to anyone who asks of him in a way only he can. I don't know. I don't really know what else to say. It's all he had me, told me to do was come on here and read chapters 1 through 4 and to tell you guys that he says it's being fulfilled right now like he's going to do this he's done it before and he's doing it again and um, we're not going to be raptured out of here we're going to be here for it we're going to live through it we are the remnant and I'm um, still reading revelations it's starting to come together and I know before in the past I mentioned two witnesses, like we are the two witnesses, which we are part of the two witnesses. But it mentions two witnesses being dead in the streets for three and a half days. And it's like, but the way it's written, it's almost like the two witnesses dying and then raising on the third day. It's like, well, if we are the two witnesses, it says that we lay dead for three days in the streets and then we're resurrected and the Lord calls us up and then there's a great earthquake and stuff but also at the same time you find parts in there where it's talking about the last days like this right here 
where he says that we will be the remnant left and we will go to Israel. And, you know, but it's a, you know, because that's where he's going to get rid of everything that's in Israel before we get there that doesn't belong. You know, like the parable we tears, he's going to get rid of those, he's going to bind up those things that offend and get them out of the way. And then his children will shine forth. Well, if in this Isaiah, which I know, because he told me to share with you, because it's happening today, doesn't mention us being dead in the streets for three days and raising from the dead. Does that mean that they switched that around in the Bible too to make it look like it's supposed to happen in our day? But really, John was actually given a revelation from the beginning of time to the end of time, like before even the Lord came and during and after. It was all together in one in Revelation. And if that's the case, that means the two witnesses that laid dead in the streets for three days, you know, could have been John the Baptist and the Lord. And they like lied to us or something about how everything went down because we know they hid it from us for a long time. You know those Dead Sea Scrolls they claimed they found? They didn't find them. They've been hiding them. And then they give it to us and it's all weird and stuff. Like this one says that one, that one says that one. Because they did combobulate and messed it all up. So this person's teaching that and this person's teaching that. And then when somebody figures it out, they just figure, well, we're not going to listen to any of it because now we know they're lying to us. And then we don't get to hear the message that was supposed to be given to us because we get discouraged about the fact that we're being lied to. So we don't think anything's the truth. You know, I've even found the discrepancies, God showed me the discrepancies in the Bible that man put in there on purpose, using the interpretation to feed their own agenda. That's why Revelations is happening, where God's revealing the truth in all things, despite what they try to feed us. You know, they can't brainwash us in their way, because we're brainwashed by God, which means our brains are clean of all their filth. So we recognize it for what it is as soon as they try. That's why they hate us. Because we can see through the masks that they wear when they are wolves pretending to be sheep of the Lord, the Great Shepherd. Oh, I don't know. See, this is why I miss church. Well, I've never really found a church that actually 100% truly follows what God's Word says. So, but I do miss the community of believers and I'm excited to know that he's bringing us together here soon so we can so he can guide us to where he says that we gotta go and we'll finally be together as a community of true believers literally one people under God the real God the true God and the one true Lord and it will be much better because we will finally be able to have each other and they won't be able to find us unless there's a Judas among us but the Lord said he's going to take them out of the way so we can live the way he intended for us to live so I do not fear those things ah oh, the Lord's so amazing the Lord was the word and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And the Word created us. The Lord Himself created us with His own hands. Right with Father God. Literally, He held me in His hands. And you, all of us, He held all of us in His hands. As a potter does its clay. Talked to us and everything before we even came down here. It's so amazing to know that. And that's why he says, I'll always have you in my hands. I will always hold you. And I'll never let you go. They can never take you out of my hand, he says. Because he made us with those hands. And he let us fly. Love something, you let it go. And if it comes back, it's yours forever. <laughs> that's where we get that saying from I think the Lord started that one himself if you love something let it go and when it comes back it's yours forever 
Hey, maybe maybe Father even told him that when he was teaching him everything before they made us. You know? Oh, all right. I love you guys so much. And I can't wait to meet some of you in person. It's going to be a wonderful. It's going to be so wonderful. God bless you guys. Godspeed. Until next time. Much love. Pray for me. And I'll be praying for you. <laughs> Bye.